I'm the calculus professor and today we'll be talking about U substitution. In problem number 39, we'd like to use substitution to integrate the integral from 0 to 1 of 2x times 4 minus x squared dx. All right. Um, the difference between this problem and problems that we've done earlier uh, is we're using substitution now on a problem where we have a definite integral instead of an indefinite integral. And for the most part, things are the same here, uh, but with one minor exception. When you're doing an indefinite integral, you always have to move back to x's at the end of the problem. You have some u's in your antiderivative, and then you move back to x's after you're done working with your u's. When you have a definite integral like this, we can make a u substitution and, so to speak, never look back to the x's. And this is how I like to teach it, is you never go back to x again once you've moved to u. So I feel like the way I like to explain it is here we live in x world, we're going to move over to u-world and then just do all of our work in u-world when we have a definite integral. So how should we do this? Well, first thing, let's look at this guy and see if there is an obvious, um, if there is an obvious u-substitution. Now, quickly, this is kind of silly in some ways because I could, um, just as easily multiply this thing out and then take its antiderivative. But for the sake of practice, let's use a u substitution here for our 4 minus x squared and see how this works. Okay, so what I want to do is let's let u be equal to 4 minus x squared. If u is 4 minus x squared, then du is equal to negative 2 x dx. Now, I don't have a negative 2x dx in here. I have a 2x dx. So all I need is a negative. So let's put in a negative, and then we'll have to multiply on the outside by a negative to compensate for it. So we're just multiplying by 1. So I could rewrite this integral as negative integral from 0 to 1 of negative 2x times 4 minus x squared dx. So I put in a negative, so I'd have my negative 2x, and I put a negative on the outside so that I'm just multiplying by 1. Okay, let's rewrite as an integral in u. So my negative on the outside just hangs around. Then I get the integral of, now let's plug in my u's. This guy right here, 4 minus x squared, that is u. My negative 2x dx, negative 2x dx, that is du. So I just end up with integral of u du. But I'm not quite done here with writing this integral. What I need is I need to put in my limits of integration. And the wrong thing to do is just to put in 0 and 1 again. Because we're not living in x world anymore. Remember, what these numbers are actually saying is that there's a range of values for x. We're going to sum all these rectangles up, starting at 0 and ending at 1 for x's. But when we change into u world, we might be summing the range of u's is different than the range of x's. And so we need to figure out what's the new range of u's. And so what I do is I say, okay, if x is 0, remember this is an x value, this is an x value. If x is 0, then what is u? Well, I could just plug in 0 up here for x, and I get that u would be 4 minus 0 squared, or just 4. So this value right here is now a 4. Do the same thing with the value 1. So I get u is equal to 4 minus 1 squared, which is 4 minus 1, or 3. Now, you might say, hey, the bigger number's on the bottom, and that's bad. 
Okay. If you don't like it, you can always flip these and make this positive, or you can just leave it alone and everything's fine. Okay. So it, it's perfectly fine to take an antiderivative with the the smaller number on top. That's fine. If you don't like it, that's fine. You can also flip it, make it negative, and that will work as well, whichever way you like. So now let's take our antiderivative. Uh, so I have a negative, and then the antiderivative of u is u squared over 2. And then I can evaluate that from 4 to 3. Notice I'm not moving back to x at all. I'm just going to go ahead and evaluate this, but I need to make sure that I'm in the right world, in u world, and not in x world. If I use 0 and 1 here, this is all messed up. Okay, so now let's plug things in. Uh, I get negative 3 squared over 2. So negative 3 squared over 2 minus negative 4 squared over 2. All right, so what do we end up with? Well, this is negative 9 halves. And then this is minus minus, so plus 16 halves. So we have 16 halves minus 9 halves. That would be 7 halves. So our answer is 7 halves. And we are done.